Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Bo Filter, the, uh, who's, who's got a website called globaljusticepublishing.com, globaljusticepublishing.com, uh, former U.S. military, author of the book, The Cause of Wars and Aggression. And we're going to be talking about the issue of standing armies, more specifically in the United States, our good friends to the South, who need a lot of help, as we do. Yes. Well, uh, you know, that's a good way to say it, standing army there, but the ramifications of that standing army has such repercussions on Canada. And the whole world. And why it's so important for Canada to know about the issue of standing armies. And because the United States is a big bully country, like a big elephant sticks its trunk over the border and kind of bullies, bullies our prime ministers into going into war to the tune of well, the latest figure is 177 countries have special forces of NATO, and of course, Canada is part of NATO. So whenever so we say it again, 177 countries, countries have special forces from NATO, and Canada is a in member. Them? Pardon? In them? In them. 177. Yes. That's almost every country in the world. That's right, and there's only a couple tiny countries that don't, don't. have milita uh, f foreign military well, forces. Well, it's true, and you sort of think about it. Who doesn't? <clears throat> well, Moldavia doesn't. Russia doesn't. Lichtenberg doesn't, or Lichten that's, Lichtenstein, that's because they're so tiny yeah. and they have no resources. See, that's the trick to getting invaded, is if you've got resources, anything worth anything, then the guys are going to come to get it. And the mi oh, military right, is right. the big backup. Right. If they can't get right. talk you out of it with contracts. Of yeah, the reality of the way the people who run the United States work is so different from, I mean, these people, they deliberately start wars. They kill people by the hundreds of thousands and the millions in order to maintain their power. They're totally insane and have been for generations. I right. mean, to get to the top you have got of that system, you've got to be totally insane. Well, we're going to talk about here now the, the depth of this and how far it goes back. It actually goes back thousands of years. And so to kind of people set the people. context for the little video we're going to uh, look at, which is one that I made a couple of years ago called Pentagon in 90 Seconds. We're going to talk about the illegitimacy of the Pentagon. And so I thought as a context, we go back to the uh, U.S. Constitution when it was first written. And before the, the, the convention stood one James Madison. He's considered the father of the U.S. Constitution. And he's addressing them. And this is in uh, June of 1787. And uh, he's going to set the broader stage. He says, quote, in time of actual war, great discretionary powers are constantly given to the executive magistrate. Constant apprehension of war has the same tendency to render the head too large for the body. A standing military force with an overgrown executive will not long be safe companions to liberty. The means of defense against foreign danger have been always the interest instruments of tyranny at home. Among the Romans, so we're going back a couple thousand years, it was a standing maxim to excite a war whenever a revolt was apprehended. So if the people are going to uprise, you start a war. they start a war. And they still do it. Yes, they still okay, do it. so we're still doing it. Throughout all Europe, all Europe, the armies kept up under the pretext of defending having enslaved the people. So the wars are about enslaving the people. And here he is at the Continental Convention. So a lot of the people, the uh, Federalists, they wanted the words, no standing army in the Constitution. And they couldn't get it in there because there's too many people who like war and want to keep fostering it because it's the most profitable business on the planet. So they weren't able to get them in there. But so the, the warriors kind of won that battle, but they didn't really win the war because it did, in con a little bit convoluted terms, an ellipsis is required to get it out, but it's actually in the Constitution. So why don't we go to the clip? of Pentagon in 90 seconds, and we'll see how they actually did it. Okay, so here's the video.
Thanks, Bo. So, and that video is available at globaljusticepublishing.com. Yes. Okay. And you sent it into the Cannes Film Festival. That's right. So they can, you can go to my website, Global Justice Publishing, and watch it. I have other videos and articles and stuff there, and you can access my book there as well. But the interesting thing about the Cannes Film Festival is that uh, they said in their uh, preempt that you don't, you're not going to hear from us back because very few get shortlisted. Thousands and thousands of submissions each year. Uh, in the end, I did get something back from them. I knew I wouldn't be shortlisted because, as you can see, it's not a high, <laughs> not high end, a high money thing. Yeah. But the content is high value. Yes, yes. So yes, I thought, well, they can have, uh, yeah. you know, the censors won't let it get by. But the people in power in the military, they'll, they'll sure not like it, that's for sure. So uh, anyways, they did send me back a, something. They said, well, uh, we would like to see your next submission. Oh, well, that's, that's gr a great honor. So that's a great honor, like actually. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it must have rolled a few heads because they did have to, the judges did have to watch it to throw it out. So, so I didn't know, really, until I saw your video that, uh, I, I maybe should know this, that Congress shall not fund a standing army for more than two years. Now, I guess that means they can fund it for two years and then agree to do it again, but at least it has to come up for a discussion somewhere. Right, and then you also have a Congress that says no war can be declared by, it has to be declared by Congress, right. not the president. And that's gone so the too. idea was to block the judiciary and the executive from overreaching power. So Congress shall declare law. Uh, dec Right, you have to right. have permission from and Congress. And they've given that power up. And they've given that power yeah. up. To the Congress for, for is so pathetic and corrupt that they've given that power well, up. Well, politicians, as you know, throughout history, they, they, they can be bought. And when you have a Federal Reserve System that literally can print money at will, uh, it doesn't take long for that money to find its way into. Yeah. And, it, and of course, if politicians don't get bought, they can be threatened very easily and intimidated. and. Uh, we won't get into that deep subject uh, right here, though. But the, the key is that what we need to be doing here with this video is it gives us a chance to do a constitutional realignment. It, it, um, the public is responsible, as you see at the, in my credits, I say who's, who's responsible here by authority of we the people. Yeah. And so they need to uh, pull their, pick up their politicians by the scruff of the neck and say we're going back to the Constitution, but we do have a dilemma because the people don't read the Constitution. You can see that the parliamentarians don't read the Constitution. Congress doesn't read it. The presidents don't read it because every time they get up there and they put up their hand as an oath, and then do they do this? Do they say, oh, well, now we're not going to be able to fund <laughs> this war because here it says right here, Clause 12, Section 8, Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution says you can't fund a war for more than two years. And see, that's the way of blocking standing armies uh, from continuing and then doing exactly what the Romans were doing and the U.S. is doing today. So <clears throat> the, we have a crisis then because the standing army exists rather than the Constitution. So and I'm the hoping standing this could be a rallying call. Uh, and the standing army works for the corporation, really. It doesn't work for the people of the United States. It is the most profitable industry on the planet, which is why war always goes and continues. And they buy in to the media. So the mainstream media, you might have heard uh, William Colby, the head of the CIA back in the 1975 in the Frank Church Senate Committee, uh, a research on what the CIA and the military had been doing up until then. And they found that they had purchased, that uh, Colby was, had said in those things that there isn't anybody um, within uh, this, in, in uh, the scope of the major people in the media that isn't controlled or owned by the CIA outright. Right, and because the CIA they, they working the for, you know, the, the, the powerful industrial corporate, because that's who they work for. They that's, don't, that's right. The CIA yeah. doesn't work for the people of the United States. Although there's a lot of good people in the CIA, right? Well, but, of course. But, but right, the and, people and who run the CIA are not such well, good Well, what's people. so beautiful about they it know is, what they're doing. is the people on the front 
the front desk are people that don't even know what's going on. Yeah. There's layers behind that before you get to the real skullduggery in the, yeah. in the back doors, and they only have to control the major key seats of committees and different right. organizations right. to really run the show. So we have a crisis, and it's a constitutional crisis, as you can see, and the weight of it bears over into Canada because we feel forced to participate in NATO, which gives us special forces in 177 countries, and the Pentagon people are bragging about it, yeah. that they have no respect, really, for the And US NATO has become a force that just goes in and destroys countries when corporate America wants them destroyed for whatever reason. That's what NATO is. It really is not organized crime. Everything that it does about it is organized crime structure. But we're told a completely and different story. I mean, that's not the story we're told. Well, that's all we get is their story. Is there, it's their story. That's, our story that's is here, which doesn't really get out to the main, mainstream for the yeah. most part. Uh, can we talk about 9-11 for a second? Just uh, Yeah, uh, how this fits in? Go yeah. Ahead. Well, I mean, well, this, uh, if you take the impeachment right now that's supposedly going against Trump, the same Democrats that are so concerned about this thing that happened in Ukraine, and maybe rightfully so, have never asked one question about 9-11, like why is there no evidence of an airplane ever hitting the Pentagon, speaking of the Pentagon. Right. I mean, the whole system is gone. It's just gone. Yeah, it's, it's totally corrupt. Well, 9-11 has some interesting dates, too, as long as in terms of connecting back here to this so long gone now into a military state. We do not have a democracy or a republic. It's a military state and it goes back as far as the Romans and really quite further than that my research takes us. But something very interesting in terms of dates, the shovel to uh, break ground when they started building that Pentagon was in 1941. Okay. Okay. On September 11th, oh, really? September 11th, 1941, they broke ground to start building the Pentagon. The Pentagon right. Okay. And 9/11 was September 11th, 2001. That happens to be the Diamond Jubilee of breaking ground for the Pentagon. So we've had permanent war. Oh, the little war. games they play. Yes. The permanent war has been going on since then. The funding should have stopped two years after they broke ground. Oh, sorry, you'll have to go back to Congress, and maybe in another year we'll consider if there's somebody. Because for the people of the United States, the Army is just something... I mean, you want to be able to defend yourself, but what happened in the United States is the corporations took over the Army, and they've sent them all over the world to fight and die and kill others for corporate profit. That's all, that's all that it's well, about. And Bo, we're out of time. Oh, that fast? That fast. Oh, shoot. I really wanted to bring up a good point. <laughs> okay, make the point and then we're out of time. <laughs> you ran at a point of uh, major psychopathology. I call it border diarrhea. See, you're supposed, the Constitution says you're supposed to defend. Well, that defense occurs at your border. Yes. And in your country, yes. when you go over. Well, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the signal. But you're absolutely right, Bo. We'll finish I'm, off next time you're on. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. <laughs>